So I get a lot of shit for not liking Glocks, and that's due to my failure to be able to explain why I don't like Glocks. And somebody I just asked in my last live stream again, you know, why, do you, why don't you like Glocks, what, they're not reliable enough, or something like that, and... So I decided it's time to put the story down, because I can't just tell you in a couple of words. There's a story behind why I don't like Glocks. So to start this story off, we need to go all the way back to my first gun. Now my legitimate first gun, I believe it was a Jennings. A 22, just a little deuce deuce, a little purse gun, just this tiny little thing. And it was cool, but the extractor broke, so I had to take out shells by hand every single time. And it kind of sucked. I think I wind up trading that for a Pioneer sub or maybe a starter jacket. I can't remember. Either which way, in, in that period of time, you had to have two things. Subs and a starter jacket. Even though we didn't have cars, we'd still put the sub in our room and that that's what it meant to be a man at that point in time. Or I should say a preteen, but th that's not the point. So, as I'm going through, you know... I'm like, man, pistols just don't have reliability. Because I look at my Ruger 1022, this tank that just keeps chugging along, and this pistol just won't run. And I'd try out other people's pistols. Aside from revolvers, none of them ran. None of them. And it's usually because they were high points. And the thing was, we didn't have YouTube back then. Nobody knew how the hell to take apart a high point and clean it, so it would go like, couple hundred rounds and all of a sudden you got a Jamlomatic. And that's where it was the rest of its life because no one knew how to clean it. No one knew that you had to push the slide forward and knock a pin out. and Yeah, so the high points would last just a couple hundred rounds and then they were junk. So all my pistols were just garbage. They, they didn't run. Like compared to my rifles, the pistols don't work. So I never really had a lot of faith in pistols. Well, I get a little bit older, I get a little bit of money and I don't borrow money. So people would ask to borrow money. I'm like, what kind of guns you got? I will buy that gun for the amount of money you want to borrow. And then if you pay me back in, or if you, you could buy it back for me in 30 days for the same exact amount. So I had my hands on some Browning, stuff like that. But they were never really truly mine. So I never really shot them because everybody came back in 30 days and bought their gun back. So the first gun... I legitimately went into a gun store with the intent to buy and own was a Glock 21. The Hillary band just got lifted. Now we got double stack magazines. You go into a gun shop, you had high points, you had 1911s, or you had Glocks. The only thing with a reasonable amount of capacity were the Glocks. Now I know a bunch of other firearms existed at that time with those magazines, but that's not what was in the shelf. Again, we didn't have YouTube. Like, this is still a couple of years before YouTube was even started. So I was completely unaware of these other firearms. So, do I want a High Point, which I know is garbage? Do I want a 1911 that costs just a ridiculous amount of money? Or do I want a double stack lock? Well, choice is pretty much made for me. Double stack lock it is. So I buy this clock. And I modify the crap out of it. Basically, in the end, the only thing I bought was the serial number. So I put a stupid amount of money into it. And if you're modifying a gun, it's because you don't like it. You, you can't chop that up any other way. If you modify your gun, you don't like your gun. You have to change your gun in order to like it. And I didn't like the Glock. There was so much crap I had to change. I had to put on a threaded barrel. I had to change the sights. I had to put on a different trigger. I had to change the magazine capacity by putting those little extenders on there. Anyway, that firearm gets stolen. So I'm like, okay... Let's look at the price. What do I have into it? That gun shop ripped me off hardcore. They soaked me like damn near 600 bucks for the thing. I mean, I shouldn't say that because Glocks are pretty high, high price. But So I got like damn near 600 bucks in the actual firearm. Then I got, what, another 100 and some change in the barrel. I got like 200 bucks in the sights, I think. That sounds right. So that's what, uh, six, seven, eight, nine... Then the magazine adapters, I had 20 bucks a piece. Other little modifications, plus the trigger, we'll call it 1200 bucks in this Glock. So I'm like, okay, instead of, you know, shopping for a Glock price and comparing what's in that network, 
I'm going to be shopping for a $1,200 gun. Well, this was years later too. YouTube's big now. I'm watching all the gun channels. I'm aware of a lot of different options. So I'm looking at $1,200 guns and there, like an angel, straight from the heavens, the FNX 45 Tactical. I'm like, wow, it's already milled out for the uh, red dot, so I wouldn't have to get a new slide. It's already got suppressor height sights on it. It's already got night sights on it. It's already got a threaded barrel. It's already got the capacity I'm looking for. And it's a double single. I like hammers on firearms. I didn't really have an opinion at the time, but they look cool. Like, I always like 1911s because in the movies, the bad guy would always cock the hammer like, are you sure? So I, I've always liked hammers on firearms. Plus, like, the Beretta, it just, this beautiful piece of equipment comes down. And I'm like, wow, that is actually cheaper than what I had stuck into that Glock. And it's everything I want. 45, double stack. Like I said, I, I went through everything. I'm like, let's buy that one. That's the one I'm going to get. So I buy that gun. I have not, to this day, done a single modification to it. And that's how I determine whether or not I like a gun. If I start modifying the crap out of a firearm, I don't like it. If you truly like the firearm, there's no need to modify anything. If you modify it, then you don't like the firearm. There's something about it you don't like that you have to change. Beautiful firearm. And then you get to the price of Glocks. Like, at a Glock price, like the bear gun, like the standard gun, what you could get from other manufacturers, like, look at the Smith & Wesson. Already has a threaded barrel. Already has suppressor height sights. Capacity, 15 plus 1. Now, again, this is what, 9 mil? It is the same price of a Glock, but you get add-ons that if you were to buy this as a Glock with these types of features on it, dude, they're like almost $700. It's ridiculous. You get this, you get all your different back straps, you get an extra magazine, hard case, just like the Glock. Except you're getting the same setup as like a $700 Glock for the same price as their cheapest Glock. Like, that's amazing. And then the biggest reason whatsoever, like, they are ugly as shit. I mean, they are really ugly firearms. They are number two on the ugliest firearm scale. Obviously, high point is number one. Right next to that, the Glock. No styling whatsoever. Look at the styling on, like, competitive options. These beautiful cuts in there. How the slide is shaved. It's nice. It just, this gun flows. This looks really good. Glock, nope. Looks like it's straight out of the 80s. Oh, that's because it is. They've never updated their styling or changed their design yet. For a while, they had those ports, and they'll do little things here and there, but nothing that can give you this type of styling. This is a good-looking firearm. And that is the reason I don't like Glocks, because I'm not satisfied with them. And you know if you're not satisfied, because again, like I said, if you modify your firearm, you are not satisfied with your firearm. It did not satisfy you. I like a firearm I am satisfied with, I can just buy it and say yes. That is a good looking firearm. They're ugly, there's nothing you can do about that. They're completely ugly unless you completely change everything about the firearm to where you're only buying the serial number. And do you really want to buy, what, a $500, $600 serial number? No. That's ridiculous. You're paying that much on a number if you're going to change out the slide, the frame, and everything. Like, it's absurd. And then if you wanted to stay at a cheaper firearm and buy something, you get so many more options. And such a better looking firearm at the same exact price as an entry level Glock. It makes no sense whatsoever to buy a Glock. And then I get their coolness factor. They're reliable. Their marketing was top notch. I mean, it involved cocaine and strippers and helicopters. Like, bad guys in movies. Like, how much cooler of marketing. They basically did what Olight did, but they did it back in the 80s. Like, that, that's cool. That, that really is cool. And I get on, and I understand why they have such a huge following because their marketing was just above and beyond what any other firearm could bring to the table. And they've been around so long and they're in so many movies. Like, I get the following behind it, but it's not for me. They just don't give me what I want. I'm not satisfied with the firearm. They're ugly. It just, to make me satisfied with that firearm, I'd be into it for like 1200 bucks. 
So let's look at $1,200 firearms because that's what I need to compare it to because that's the amount of money I would put into it. $1,200 firearms compared to a Glock and you're telling me you're going to pick a Glock? No, that's just not going to happen. But that is my reason for not liking Glock. It's not like there's anything wrong with the firearm. I get all the positive attributes behind it, but it's just not for me. But anyway, thank you for watching. Like that support channel. Patreon and affiliate links like usual. And don't forget to subscribe.